welcome to Prompt Circle, where we discuss everything AI. In today's video, we'll be using AI to power up Google Sheets. We'll be using this to perform some powerful tasks right inside our spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are widely used, and combining them with the power of AI is definitely a productivity superpower. All right, let's take a look at what we'll be building out today. First, we're going to be taking this list of tweets in our spreadsheet and we're going to be determining what the sentiment for each tweet is. We're going to be using GPT, the model behind ChatGPT, to perform this task. So here we go to our extensions, we go to our macro, we have a script that is going to run, run through the entire list of tweets and then generate a sentiment and populate the sentiment column. So once it's completed, you can see our sentiment appears and we can go through it just to make sure it's correct. Just upgraded my bike with some awesome accessories that looks like a positive tweet and you can go down and read through. It's fairly accurate, all the tweets with the sentiments as well. So for the second example, we'll be generating product descriptions for this list of products. So we have our product names and we have a description column. Again, we're going to be going over to extensions. We're going to be using a macro to get the product description for each of these products. Again, we're using GPT here to do the same thing, very similar to what we did in the last one. It's going to go ahead and generate all the product descriptions. So you can see product descriptions generated for these different products. Now, this is a good starting point if you're trying to run these type of tasks. So you can start to imagine other things you can do. You can summarize specific things. You can obtain hashtags for your posts. There's so many different things that you can do using this model to perform a task across your rows. And this is a good way to do things in bulk using these AI models. All right, so let's jump in and see exactly how we're gonna be building this out. All right, to build this out, we will require an open AI API key. Uh, you can get this from your website. I've added a link in the description. So all you need to do is just sign in or sign up if you don't have an account. Go to your account section, click on your account section, click on view API keys. If you already have a key, copy that key, or you can generate a whole new key as well. So this is the only thing that we'll be needing uh, to actually perform our tasks today. All right, to start off, we're gonna be in our spreadsheet. So we have a list of tweets here uh, in our Google Sheets. And the very first thing we want to do first and foremost is to start our app script. App script is a tool that you use to write functions that can perform tasks on your Google applications. So before we actually start writing our function, we'll be storing our API key from OpenAI in a script property. So right here, we can go ahead and add a script property, give it a name, OpenAI API key, and then we can paste the value that we had received um, from the OpenAI website. Once you're done, go ahead and click on the save script properties and then we'll be ready to go. So this is the function we're gonna be creating today. We'll be stepping through everything. Uh, we've also added a GitHub link for this code. You can copy that to follow along. Let's explain the function at a high level before going a little bit deeper. So it takes one input, in our case, a tweet, and it uses that tweet as part of a prompt to open AI to get a corresponding sentiment. Now let's dive a little bit deeper. So we start by giving our function a name. So we're gonna call it get tweet sentiments. This function is gonna take in one parameter, a tweet. So we need to get our active sheet. To do that, we'll be using the spreadsheet app class. This gives us access to our spreadsheet. We can assign that to a variable, which we're calling sheets. Next up, we need to access the data in the spreadsheet. To do that, we need to use the get data range method and get values method to get access to the data. We're gonna assign all of that to a data variable. Now, because we have stored our open AI API key as a script property, we would need to use the properties service class to get our properties. 
to get the specific property we're going to use the get property method along with the key we use to store our open ai key and then we'll use this in our function then we want to go ahead and define parameters that we're going to be needing to make an api call to open ai starting with the base url the ai model which we'll be using which means the GPT model we'll be using. So we're going to be using text up in G003. I think you can use other models like Ada or Cori, uh, but we're just going to use text da Vinci is the most powerful one just for our demonstration here. We want to set a max token, which is going to be used to control how much text is outputted. And we're going to use a stop, which is used to, to know when to cut off the generation. Uh, in our case, we're using just a full stop. Because we want the processing to ignore the header, we have implemented some logic to make this happen, which is why we have a variable called row, which we're setting to one, which indicates where the processing should start from. In the second part of our function, we would be looping through each of the rows to get the value which we would be using for our prompt. We would use a for each loop and loop through the rows in our data. We also have a condition ensuring that the processing starts after the headers. We then increment the row number as we loop through the list. Now, we want to define our prompt to start with. So here we have a simple prompt that says, classify the sentiment in this tweet. We are referencing a value from the row that contains the tweet. And then we want the results to return either positive, negative, or neutral. It's always a good practice to be explicit in your instructions while designing your prompt. Next, we want to build up our API call. So we want to define options and payload. So here we want to include authorization. We want to enter the API key, which we stored earlier on in our authorization, which is basically a Vera token. And we'll be using the URL fetch app, which gives us access to a method, which we'll be using to make our API call. The output is initially returned in JSON format. We need to parse that using the JSON class. Then we can obtain our sentiment directly from inside the choices.txt object from the OpenAI output. Finally, we get the row and the column we'd like to populate. So in this case, we're setting the row dynamically and incrementing as the loop continues. Then we set the column to two because that is where we're going to be populating the sentiment as well. Next up, we're going to run our code to see if it actually works. So we hit the run button. We can see that execution has started. When running this for the first time, you'll be taking through a dialogue where you have to actually grant access to your Google Sheet. Uh, it's just a Google dialog, so be sure to allow that. But we can see now that our result has completed, execution is complete, and we can see that our tweets have been processed, and we can see both positive and negative sentiments uh, being processed as required. Now, all right, next up is to deploy our app so it is usable right from inside our spreadsheet. To do that, we go to deploy, hit new deploy. We select web app, which is what we're going to be using uh, in our deployment. And then once we're done, we want to select permissions as to who's able to uh, utilize this. If you don't want any other person to use this, you can specify that this is just for you. Uh, once you're done with that, once it's deployed, then it's available through your macros for use. All right, next up, we're going to be importing this function as a macro so we go to extensions we hit macros we hit import macro and then we want to add our newly added function uh, as a macro so that we can call this macro again so let's test it out so let's remove all the values right now and try to call this macro directly from inside the spreadsheet we'll go to extensions go to macro and now we see our macro there and we can use it and now you can see that it's 
currently running the script and once it finishes running that script we will see our result as before so that's exactly how we can use a lot of these types of capabilities right inside the spreadsheet so you can continue to imagine all the different ways that you can use this moving forward i'm excited to see what you actually build thank you for watching and talk to you next time